We're going to keep our eyes uh, in the meantime, guys, on uh, the health care news. Uh, there is reporting out of Reuters, David, that uh, at least on the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine, that this latest lab study out of the New England Journal of Medicine does show some effectiveness against the variant that has been uh, seen prevalent in Brazil. Uh, so that if if that were to uh, if you strung that out uh, to a good outcome would take at least one of the uncertainties hovering over this market out of contention. Yeah. Uh, as you point out, concern about the variants is certainly something we hear a lot from the CDC and the other leaders in the healthcare and care uh, world that we uh, that we are listening to. Let's get to Meg Terrell now for more on that story in terms of Pfizer, BioNTech uh, and others as well. Meg. Hey, David. So this is the latest lab study looking at blood taken from people who were in the Pfizer-BioNTech pivotal trial essentially two or four weeks after they got their second dose. So when they are fully protected by these vaccines and what they looked at was the ability of the neutralizing antibodies generated by that vaccine to neutralize the new variants. And they compared that against the strength against an older strain of the coronavirus. And what they found is that for B117, that's the one associated with the UK, uh, and P1, which is associated with Brazil, the neutralization was roughly equivalent for those to the older strain. Now, unsurprisingly, they found against B1351, which is associated with South Africa, the neutralization was robust but lower. Um, and they say that T-cell immunity, of course, may also be involved in protection here. Um, what it shows, though, is that it was still robust across these variants. They do say real-world studies will be known uh, needed to really know how well the vaccines protect against these variants. But really being seen as kind of reassuring news that uh, against these variants, and P1 in particular, because we haven't seen as much data against this variant, uh, that the vaccine does still neutralize. This, of course, is the variant that uh, is associated with potential reinfection rates. Uh, in Brazil, which are really alarming public health folks, guys. Um, in terms of the prevalence of those variants here in the U.S., it's B117 that really is the most common. More than 3,000 cases have been reported to the CDC. Uh, B1351, 81 cases. And P1, just 15 cases have been reported here. So, guys, it really is B117 that public health experts here in the U.S. are so concerned about <clears throat> right now just because it is more transmissible, and that's why they say it's so important to get vaccine coverage out there before this has a chance to take off. Carl? Yeah, uh, Meg, with your help, we're going to monitor that, along with the um, ongoing picture of supply and vaccination administration in this country. Uh, I was amazed, Andy Slavitt's uh, tweet yesterday, uh, of those 65 and older, um, 60 percent have, uh, have had the vaccine. Seven weeks ago, it was only eight percent, which is uh, mind blowing. Although the wires today, Meg, have some new headlines about J&J &J, uh, being, quote, under stress, according to sources, and getting uh, their committed vaccine supply to the EU, which is interesting. I know you've been paying a lot of attention to vaccine nationalism over the last couple of days. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it's been especially difficult, it seems like, for the EU in terms of getting supply. We've been seeing similar things with the AstraZeneca vaccine. And so a lot of kind of um, quibbles, stronger words maybe uh, than that, coming out um, in European markets over getting access to vaccines. And, you know, we have all of these targets that we've been hearing about, but this is a delicate process. And normally we are not paying such close attention to uh, supplies of drugs and vaccines, and we don't need them so urgently in such huge quantities. And so this could be a bumpy road, but, um, you know, certainly getting a lot more people vaccinated here in the U.S. pretty quickly. Yeah, Meg, I, you know, this morning I read a stat and as I start to dig into the data and I realize it's a little more complicated, but it makes sense. Um, I read a stat that more people here in the U.S. have been vaccinated now than have actually had the virus. Um, so I think it sort of just speaks to how quickly we are seeing this ramp that you're talking about. I am curious, though, um, I, and I realize that there's still it's like a trickle of data points right now. And I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, but pregnant women and nursing mothers, what do we know so far about vaccines and the impact uh, on that front as well. So the companies themselves uh, that make the vaccines are starting their own studies um, in pregnant women. And so they'll have more definitive data on that. But there are real world evidence from thousands of pregnant women who have taken these vaccines that are on the market. Um, so far, what we've heard from the folks at the CDC, they've done presentations on this, uh, nothing that would raise alarms. Um, and so here in the U.S., you know, they are basically saying for pregnant women who are at higher risk of uh, severe effects from COVID-19, talk with your doctor about whether this is the right thing to do 
for you. I mean, they have to acknowledge that pregnant women were not included in the clinical trials, uh, but they are gathering evidence around it. Um, and the picture so far, what we hear is that it's looking pretty good. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.